The final content area is geometry. And so uh, first uh, type of questions that you're uh, going to see are uh, areas and volumes of geometric figures. So if we start with this uh, basic formulas for rectangles and squares, uh, they may also talk about a ratio of parts and areas. And we'll get to that uh, when that question comes up. So those are the, the things that you need to be uh, aware of. So the first example, a rectangle has a length of x units and a width of x minus 6. So if you just label your two dimensions, um, and if you're told that the total area is 72, we can use the area formula of base times height, plug in 72 for area, and plug in x, and x minus 6 is the base and the height. And now it just becomes a quadratic equation. So if we expand our x, or our, the right side of our equation by uh, distributing the x, we get x squared minus 6x, uh, subtract 72 from both sides. And you can either solve this by hand. Here we would look to factor and then set our factors equal to 0. So the two factors of 72, whose total sum is a negative 6, would be negative 12 uh, and positive 6, meaning our x value can be 12 or negative 6. Since we're looking for a length, it needs to be a positive number, and so 12 would be our solution. Now, we could have also uh, taken this same equation uh, from this step right here, and we could have typed it into our calculator. Uh, if we do that, type it directly in. Uh, what we would see on our graph here are the two intersections at negative 6 and 12, uh, again, um, confirming that our answer is 12. Uh, the next question uh, has to do with this ratio of parts versus ratio of areas. Uh, because uh, area is a two-dimensional and volume would be a three-dimensional measurement, uh, when you take the ratio of any individual parts between two similar figures, the areas will be that ratio squared and the volumes would be that, uh, er or that ratio cubed, whatever the dimension of the measurement is. So here it says square A has sides that are 146 times the length of square B. So if you look at A versus B, what that means is the side length of B is X and the side length of A is 146 times that, times X. And so if you're looking at ratio of parts, it's uh, 146 to 1. Okay, which means when you take the areas, you're going to take that ratio and square it. So the ratio of the areas is 146 squared to 1 squared, and that gives you uh, what the um, amount would be, the k value. So if we take 146 squared here, that's the number we're looking at. 21,316 would be the solution. You don't have to physically uh, calculate any areas and compare them. You can just use their ratios. When it comes to volumes, uh, here the main volume formulas that you're going to uh, be looking at uh, is volume of a cylinder, which is pi r squared, or the volume of a prism, which is capital B, capital H, where capital B is the area formula of the base. So if the base happened to be um, a triangle, you would use one half base times height. If it's a rectangle, you use base times height. Trapezoid, one half the sum of the bases times the height. So whatever the area formula of the base is, that's the capital B. And that includes a cylinder where the base is a circle. You would use uh, pi r squared. All right, so when you look at this first question, the right cylinder here has a volume of 176 pi and a height is 11, and they want to know what's the radius of this cylinder. So we're looking for this r value, and so it's simply taking that volume formula, pi r squared, that's the capital B, times h, and we know 176 can sub substitute in for the v, r is our unknown, and our h is 11. Uh, here we could divide by 11 and pi, the 11s cancel, the pi's cancel, here the pi's cancel, and if you divide 176 uh, by 11, you are left with 16 is equal to r squared, extract your root, and so our r is equal to plus or minus 4, 
uh, except we're dealing with a, a measurement, so it can only be the positive of that, and so 4 would be your solution. Once again, we could have taken this, uh, uh, this step right here. We could have solved this equation here uh, using 176 pi is equal to uh, pi times r squared. Now, remember, we, we don't know what r is, but when we're graphing it, we do want to call it x so we can see the calculation uh, times the height, which is 11. And if we take that and view it uh, here, we can zoom in and find. We know it has to be a positive solution. So we look here at positive 4, and that confirms that we got the right answer. And the second problem uh, has a cube with an edge length of 36. A cube uh, is all square sides, and it wants the volume. Well, the volume of a cube is capital B, capital H, but the base of a square is S squared times the height. Well, the height is also that same measure. So S cubed is the volume formula uh, for a cube. And so if each edge length is 36, that means we take 36 and cube it. And it's just a matter of calculating 36 cubed, which is 46,656. So for this problem, we're looking to find the volume. Find the volume uh, of a right rectangular prism. So our base is a rectangle with dimensions of 4 by uh, a width of 10 and on a height of 6. And the volume is capital B, capital H, where base times height is the area of our base. So 4 times 10 and then times this height of 6. And so if you multiply 6 times 4 is 24, times 10 is 240, there would be our answer. You may be asked to find uh, angle relationships uh, between uh, different angle pairs and parallel lines. Let's review those really quickly. So if you have a set of parallel lines with a transversal or a third line intersecting, it's going to create these two groups of four angles each, so a total of eight angles here. And what we see uh, is that uh, when these lines are parallel, uh, we have alternate interior angles are congruent. Alternate interior angles would be angles that are on the same, or, or are both in the interior, so this represents the interior uh, between the two lines and on opposite sides of this transversal, this line passing through them. So uh, angle three and five, and angle uh, 4 and 6 would be uh, alternate interior angles uh, that are equal of those parallel lines and they therefore they are equal. You also have alternate exterior angles that are congruent if the lines are parallel and so the exterior are the angles that fall outside the two uh, intersecting intersected lines so angles 1, 2, 7, and 8 are exterior angles and alternate means they're on the opposite sides of the transversal. So angle 1 and angle 7 are congruent, as are angle 2 and angle 8. Uh, you also have a pair of uh, congruent angles that are called corresponding angles. If the lines are parallel and corresponding angles, have one angle in the exterior, one in the interior, and they're on the same side of that transversal. So angles one and five would be congruent. Each of the angle pairs here has a corresponding angle. So angle two and six are congruent. Angle three and angle seven are congruent. And finally, angle four and angle eight are congruent uh, based on corresponding angles. And the final pair of angles uh, are uh, referred to uh, as same side interior angles. And these are uh, no longer um, congruent, they're supplementary. What that means is they add up to 180 degrees. So the same side interior angles would be uh, angles 3 and 6. 
So those would add up to 180 degrees, which means they're supplementary. And then we also have angles four and five. Those are on the same side of the transversal. Uh, they're both in the interior. So these are your angle relationships that you should be familiar with. And based on those, we can answer these questions here. So uh, angle W and, and 130, these are uh, corresponding angles. So if we're asked to find angle W, those are equal, meaning we have 130 degrees. Again, corresponding angles. And this example down here, if you want, if you know that y is given as the expression 2x minus 2, there's no specific angle relationship between this angle and this angle right here. But what we can do is say that these are corresponding angles. So this angle right here would also be equivalent to 2x minus 2. And now you have this uh, adjacent angles that form a straight line. And so you know that those are go going to add up to 180 degrees. And so if you just type that equation in, 2x minus 2 plus 62 equals 180, and then zoom in or zoom to find, your answer is 60. And so that is the angle measure, or sorry, that is the value of x. And what they're asking us to find is that value of x. Again, make sure that you are finding the value of x, not the angle y. And so that would be your answer. And when it comes to uh, triangles, uh, a couple things that you would likely uh, need to know. Uh, first is that if two triangles are similar, then corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding sides are proportional, meaning they have the exact same ratio. And so that's likely what you're going to be using for similar triangles. So in this problem here, you're told that these are right triangles and they are similar. P corresponds to angle S. You can see that, uh, how they're lined up here. They're arranged in the same orientation. So if you know that Q is uh, 38 degrees, that means that this uh, corresponding angle here is also 38 degrees. And if you wanted to find uh, what S is, we can now use the acute angles in a right triangle have to add up to 90 degrees. So the measure of angle S is going to be 90 minus that 38. And if you do the math on this, you get 52. So that would be your solution. Uh, you may also need to use this same kind of relationship in terms of a story problem uh, using similar right triangles. And so here if you have two trees that are perpendicular to the ground. So here's one tree here, and here's another tree here. Okay, and so what you see uh, are these angles that are formed uh, by the shadows. Uh, are based on where the sun is placed. And the sun is placed at the same angle for both of those. So this angle is going to be the same, meaning here you have two angles uh, between these uh, two right triangles. Therefore, these are similar triangles. So if we label what we have, uh, one of these trees is 40 feet, 44 feet tall uh, and has a shadow that's 11 feet long, and the other shadow is 8, which is shorter. So the longer shadow is 11, so here's the shadow, and that tree is 44 feet. The smaller uh, tree has a shadow that is 8, and so we don't know what its height is, and we can find that by uh, setting up a pr proportion, since sides are proportional, and we can calculate that. So our unknown h is 244, as our given side 8 on the same triangle, the shadow is to the other shadow, and so if you multiply both sides by 44, uh, 11 goes into 44 four times, you get h is equal to 32 and therefore you get your solution. All right, next is just a straight right triangle. Uh, you need to be uh, aware of both Pythagorean theorem uh, as well as trig ratios when you're dealing with right triangles. So the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so here in this problem, if you wanna find a, you just plug it directly in there. So the sum of the squares of the legs, a and nine squared is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. If you subtract nine squared from both sides, and extract your root, this gives you the answer for A, and we see that it is option B here. Second problem, uh, same concept, you have a right triangle uh, with uh, legs, you can label what you have. So legs of 56 and 49, so it doesn't matter where you put those, but 56 and 49. 
and you want to find the hypotenuse, we'll call it C, uh, and it's written in the form 7 root D. So if you set up Pythagorean theorem here, so 49 squared plus 56 squared equals C squared, extract your root. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the sum, sum of uh, 49 squared plus 56 squared. So I'm going to work what's inside here. So this is 55, 37, and that's my C value. But notice it's left in this form. Well, I know that 7 times root D has to equal this answer, 55, root 55, uh, 37. Okay, so if I then take that equation, but remember, I need to write my answer in terms of x. So I'll write square root of x uh, is equal to the square root of 55, 37. I get my answer. Oops. So it looks like uh, here I would need to zoom in to see it. So one of the potential problems with this is exactly what you see right here. One, two, three, four, five. So we, we do see that it lies uh, right on this 110, 111, 112, 113. So D is going to equal 113 based on the calculator. But if I were to do this by hand, it may be easier to do that because now uh, what I can do is I can move my 7 inside this radical. If I move the 7 inside the radical, it becomes root 49D is equal to root 5537. And so now if I square both sides to get rid of the radical and divide by 49, it should give me the same uh, answer here. So if I take uh, 5537 and divide by 49, I get my answer to be 113. It confirms that solution. Right, when you're working with uh, other types of right triangles like isosceles or equilateral triangles, oftentimes uh, there's a right triangle involved in that as well. And sometimes it is one of the patterns for a 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90 triangle. The patterns for 30, 60, 90, if we have a 30 degree angle, a 60 degree angle, and a 90, is opposite 30 degrees is x, opposite 60 degrees, x root 3, and the hypotenuse 2x. And then you may also see an isosceles right triangle, or a 45, 45, 90 triangle, where you have legs of x and a hypotenuse of x root. Two. So here's an isosceles right triangle with a hypotenuse of 64, and you want to find its perimeter. So when you are solving this, the, there is a pattern. If you know that 64 is equivalent to x root 2, dividing by root 2 and rationalizing the denominator is the same as dividing by 2 and multiplying by root 2. So if you cut 64 in half, which would be 32 times root 2, that would be the length of each side. Therefore, when you take the total perimeter and add these up, 32 root 2 plus 32 root 2 uh, plus your hypotenuse 64, that is your total perimeter. And so what we see is we have this option C. For the next, we have an equilateral triangle. And so if you start with an equilateral triangle, where all the sides are equal and each of the angles is 60 degrees, when you draw in the altitude to this, it will bisect that angle and it creates a 30, 60, 90 triangle, where you have that pattern of x, 2x, x root 3. And so if you have a total perimeter of 756, we'll notice that the perimeter uh, is uh, equally divided by th three sides. So if we take 756 and divide by three, we see that each side length uh, so the perimeter is or the perimeter divided by three is going to give you each side length which is 252. And so that's this whole measure here. And so again, if we cut this in half, 126, we get the length of each of these segments here. So this is 126, 126, 
This was the 252. And this X root 3 pattern is the 126 root 3. That's what we're looking for is what the K value is. And so that K value was the 126 itself. Lastly, for right triangles, you might need to work with trig ratios, uh, either by themselves or mixed with similar triangles. So uh, the trig ratios are given by the acronym SOKATOA. Sine is the ratio of an opposite leg to the hypotenuse. So here, if you had a right triangle with an angle theta, uh, and we called this A, B, and C, the sine is going to be the opposite A over the hypotenuse C. The cosine ka is the adjacent over hypotenuse. So with regard to angle theta, the adjacent is B over the hypotenuse, which is C still. And then finally, if we are calculating the tangent is ta or toa. Toa is opposite. So opposite would be A over adjacent B. And that would be your tangent ratio. So in this uh, problem right here, if you're given just one single right triangle, RST, um, where the measures of R and S is 90. So that means R and S are these acute angles, leaving T for the remaining angle. And it tells you that the sine is, so sine is so. So with regard to uh, angle R here, the opposite is root 6, and the hypotenuse is 20. And then so it asks you from that, can you identify what would be the cosine of S? Well. With respect to S, cosine is ka adjacent root 6 over hypotenuse 20 would be your answer once again. Now, if it were something where uh, you were asked to find the sine of S or the cosine of R, uh, you might need to use Pythagorean theorem to solve for this side. So if we took 20 squared minus uh, root 6 squared, uh, you would get this measure, and then from that, you can calculate the correct trig ratio. The next problem just is a straightforward. Uh, can you find the ratio? Uh, tan is TOA, which would re with regard to the angle, which is designated as A, it's the opposite and the adjacent, so you're just taking the ratio of the opposite side, 11, over the adjacent side, 60, and so that leaves you option B. The final concept in geometry that we're going to look at are circles. So circles use this equation, um, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where hk is the vertex and r is the radius. So sometimes it's just as simple as uh, plugging it in. And so here uh, you have this uh, center point, HK, and you have a point on the graph, which could be X and Y. And so if we just start taking our formula, X minus our H value, a negative 7 squared, plus Y minus the given K value, negative 3 minus a minus becomes plus, is equal to R squared. So first of all, we know that the answer has to have this form. So I can eliminate the two middle options. And so now what we would need to do is to figure out what is our r squared value. And to find that, if we plugged in our x and y of these given points, so negative 1 for my x and a corresponding 5 for my y, I can go in and, and calculate this. I get 6 squared plus 8 squared equals r squared. 36 plus 64 is equal to 100. And so my r squared value here, I would just take my 100, substitute it in. And so I'm looking for this option uh, for my equation. You could also uh, type each of these equations into uh, your calculator. And so if we um, found or tested each of these, And we can just kind of paste each one and make the changes. So here, uh, x minus 7 and y minus 3 uh, is equal to 10. Do the same thing uh, here. x minus 7, y minus 3 is equal to 100, add a 0. And then finally down here, just add a 0 to the end. So when we're looking, if we look at all of these uh, here, 
what we can do is try to find which of these has a center at negative 7, negative 3. And so you can see um, right here, negative 7, negative 3 is this spot. So it's got to be either the, the purple or the blue. Okay, so I can eliminate the black and the red. And then I want to see which of these have a radius, or which of these pass through the point, negative 1, 5. So if I just plot that point, negative 1, 5, I can see it's right here. And so that's the blue circle, which corresponds to my last equation. So you can solve that visually as well. All right, the next um, problem here is uh, you want to find the radius of this circle. Um, solving the problem mathematically here uh, involves uh, using completing the square. And what that entails is grouping your x terms together. So we take the given equation that we have here, group our x terms together, together, leave a space to complete the square. Group our y terms together, we'll leave a space to complete the square. And then move all your other constants over to the other side, which is already done. And then we're going to complete the square. When you complete the square, we take half of our first degree terms coefficient. So half of positive 1 is 1 half. We're then going to square that and add it to both sides of the equation. Well, 1 half squared is 1 fourth, so I'm going to add 1 fourth to both sides. And the whole point of doing this, completing the square allows you to rewrite that trinomial as a binomial square with a first term of x, and a second term is always going to be the number inside, the half of the first degree term's coefficient, so positive 1 half. It's why you'll see me write the actual uh, sign in front of it as well. So we'll do the same thing for the y's. We're going to complete the square, take half of our first degree term's coefficient, so half of 1 is 1 half. We're going to square that and add it to both sides. Once again, 1 half squared is 1 fourth whole point of doing that is that we can also rewrite this as a binomial square y and then this number here plus one half. If we combine what we have on the, the right side, uh, one fourth plus one fourth is one half, one half plus one sixty one halves is one sixty two halves, and if we simplify two goes into sixteen eight times into two once. So what we see here is our eighty one fits this pattern of r squared and so if r squared is equal to 81, we can find the radius by taking the square root. And we get plus or minus 9. Remember, uh, we are looking for that radius is a distance, a length, so it has to be positive. So we'll just use the positive of that 9. So final slide here dealing with um, the measurement of radians uh, is we've looked at this conversion before, but when you're dealing with uh, radians, Radians, uh, pi radians is equivalent to 180 degrees. And so uh, if you're adding uh, two angles in radians, we can take 2 thirds pi, add 7 twelfths pi to that, and calculate what that would be. And then we can convert that into degrees using the conversion of 180 degrees per every pi radians. And so if we just took our calculator here, uh, 2 thirds plus 7 twelfths, we're looking at what is the fraction form of this, so I'll click the fraction button. So that is equal to 5 fourths pi. And if we now convert into radians, the pi's cancel. And if you took 5 fourths and multiplied by 180, you get 225 for your answer, which is option D. The final question has to do with arc lengths. Arc lengths are just a portion of a circle's circumference, the portion being consistent with the uh, m value, which is the arc measure. And the arc measure corresponds directly to the central angle of that arc. Okay, and so when we're looking at this problem here, uh, we're told that the circle has a circumference of 142 pi. So that's the circumference of it. Um, and it says that the arc length PS, so this arc length uh, versus PQ, right, it's twice that. So if PQ is X, PS is twice that. Okay, so uh, from here, if we know that uh, the ratio is 2 to 1, we can find what the actual arc measure or what the value for X is in each of those. So if 2X plus X has to equal half of the circle or 180, we get 3x is equal to 180, divide by 3, 
and we get x is 60. So we know that this is 60 degrees, this is twice that, or 120 degrees. That's these angles in here as well. And so we want to find what is the uh, length of arc QR. Well, Q to R right here is a vertical angle, so it is also 120 degrees. And so that's our M value. So if we take our calculation right here for arc length, it's M over 360 times C. So we're using that M over 360 times C where our M value was 120 over 360 times our C value is 142 pi. And if we cancel the factors of 10, 12 goes into 36 three times, I wind up with my answer 142 over 3.